So in today's video, we have a fabulous case of a patient who presents with knee pain, where actually the diagnosis is perhaps not what you first thought. If you're ready, let's dive in and explore all the clinical reasoning behind this fascinating case. So guys, let's start by diving into the history of our patient. So we have a 48 year old male who presents to our clinic with right knee pain, which started four weeks ago. And it started because he reported that his dog jumped up to say hello to him. And as this happened, he was caught off guard and he actually found that he twisted his right knee. As soon as this happened, he had an immediate hemarthrosis with lots of pain at his knee. So a hemarthrosis is significant swelling because there's feels like there's blood in the area. So patients who have reported significant swelling immediately after their injury. He found in the coming days that he started to notice some bruising around the knee and also into his calf at the back of the leg. He reports that he couldn't wait bear after the injury. And so as a result, he went to the emergency department and he had an x-ray of his right knee. However, the x-ray showed no abnormal signs at the time that he has his x-ray. We know that he has no significant past medical history and no significant drug history. He's a reasonably fit and well individual. It's just this immediate knee pain that he seems to be struggling with. So then we're into our objective examination. Remember, this is four weeks after the initial injury. So he presents with a moderate to severe effusion, moderate to severe swelling of his right knee, still occurring four weeks later. He is still not able to weigh bear on that leg. In fact, he's using crutches and he's not able to place his foot down to the floor. We look at his range of movement. He has really good range of movement of both of his hips. But when we look at his right knee, he's able to extend it, but he has significant difficulty in flexing. He's only able to flex to 90 degrees on that right leg. Of course, his left knee was absolutely fine. So we then look at his ligamentous testing. We might look at the ACL, the MCL, PCL and the LCL and we find that all of these tests don't show any abnormal signs but we have to remember this in the context of the fact that he has a lot of swelling at his knee which can make it a little bit difficult to maneuver the knee easily and he's guarding when we're trying to move his knee he's gripping really hard and so therefore that can also cause a complication with the testing itself. He had a normal straight leg raise, so he's able to extend his leg off the bed. And when we palpate his knee, we find that when we go over the joint line of his knee, it seems to be painful everywhere. So that's his objective examination. Why don't you take a second to think about the signs that you've seen and consider what you think the diagnosis is for this particular patient? Okay guys, time's up, let's explore what happened. So this gentleman actually had a tibial plateau fracture, a fracture across the most proximal surface of his tibia within the knee joint. And actually this was missed when he had that initial x-ray at the time following his injury. So let's have a look at some of the key points that led to this diagnosis or this suspicion of a possible tibial plateau fracture. Well, first of all, he had a large hemarthrosis, that significant swelling post-injury. And when individuals have this, it tells us that there's been a significant trauma that's caused injury to structures within the leg that have a good blood supply. Now, normally within the knee, the most common two we're thinking of here are a potential fracture, because of course bones have a really good blood supply, or a ligament injury, because the ligaments have a really good blood supply. Particularly the fact that he had this twisting injury might also allow us to think about the anterior cruciate ligament in more detail. So we're thinking bones or ligaments. However, he had this bruising that came up a few days post-injury, which is suspicious for ligamentous injuries. We don't normally expect that. Then, of course, we did those ligamentous tests. And whilst we said that he didn't present with any abnormal signs, and yes, there was this guarding, the fact is he doesn't really present with any ongoing ligamentous signs, given the fact that it's four weeks post-injury. If he had an ACL injury, would, we would expect that he would be able to at least start to weight bear on that leg. We would expect that if he was starting to weight bear, maybe he said that I've been putting my foot down, but I feel unstable. Maybe that's a sign, a more consistent sign of a ligamentous injury. 
But as we can see in point three, the fact that he can't weight bear at all after four weeks is still really concerning. Of course, he had this inability to weight bear right at the beginning of his injury, which is one of the Ottawa rules that leads us to suspect, right, this patient might have a fracture because they can't weight bear both immediately after the injury and for four weight bearing steps in the emergency department. Therefore, we should x-ray. And of course, the fact that, as we said, we're still four weeks, we're one month post-injury, and there's still significant pain, there's still significant swelling, and there's this inability to weight bear. And we would imagine that there should have been some settling of those symptoms in some capacity if he had an ACL injury. So these are all quite suspicious for a fracture. Now, you might be thinking about the fact that this patient had an X-ray and the fracture was missed on X-ray. And you might think, how on earth was this missed? Was there a problem with the radiologist? Were they making an error? Well, to be honest, tibial toe fractures are often missed on x-ray. They're really hard to diagnose and they're sometimes referred to as silent fractures because of the fact that it's not clear and obvious a lot of the time that they've actually presented. As you can see from this research here from Kiel Mickelson and Krogsgaard from 2018, on average, the delay of diagnosis for tibial plateau fractures can be up to 75 days, which means that there are individuals who have sustained this fracture and they still come back to clinic because they've got this significant swelling, this inability to weight bear. And then someone says, hmm, maybe we've missed this, but it takes that period of time because they've had the initial x-ray that doesn't seem to present with any abnormalities. So people kind of rule out the tibial plateau fracture. It's really important to learn from this case study. Probably the key point is that if your patient is still struggling with significant swelling and the inability to weight bear four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, however long it is post-injury, maybe we need to further investigate this. And in fact, a lot of the time, if the x-ray is normal and the signs are still present, that patient may go on to have an MRI scan or a CT scan because those will pick up a fracture that was initially missed on x-ray. So guys, I really hope you've taken some great learning from this case study. If you've enjoyed this, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads more resources for physios on our website, clinicalphysio.com and on our Instagram, at clinicalphysio. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid. See you very soon here on Clinical Physio.